We just looked at the Banach-Tarski paradox as a motivation for measure theory and measurable sets. So let's dive into measure theory. What's it all about? Measure theory. The very first definition is what's called a sigma algebra. So for to define a sigma algebra, let's say we're given some set omega. And it's just any set. It could be a finite set, could be countably infinite set, could be uncountable set, it's just some arbitrary set. So we're given omega a sigma algebra on omega is a collection which we'll denote by script A that's a subset of the power set of omega. So let me just make a brief aside so there's going to be more, but let me make a brief aside about what this is. The power set, if it's just a little bit of set theory notation. So if omega, let's take a simple example. Say omega is just a little finite set of 0 and 1. Then the power set is the collection of all subsets of omega. So it's a collection, which is also a set, containing the empty set, the set with 0, the set with 1, and the set with both 0 and 1. So it's just the collection of all the subsets of omega. So back to the definition. A sigma algebra on omega it's a collection of subsets of omega such that A is non-empty. That's just a technical condition. And two important conditions. One, it's closed. A is closed under complements and two it's closed under countable unions. So what do I mean by this? Closed under complements. This is if there's some set E in A, then that implies that the complement of E is also in A. And the complement, that's just all the stuff that's not in E. All the stuff in omega that's not in E. So the complement of the set 0 would be the set 1. It's also closed under countable unions. What do I mean by this? That means if I have a countable collection, E1, E2, some sequence of sets, countably, it's countable, let's say it's countably infinite, E1, E2, E3, up through E infinity, all members of A, that implies that the union of all of them is also in A. So it's closed under countable unions. take that definin definition in for a second. So let's make a couple of remarks. Let's take a look at what is this saying? Remarks. So here's here's a first remark. The set omega itself is always a member of any sigma algebra on omega. So how do we know this? 
Well, here's a little proof. We know that the sigma algebra A is non-empty, so it has some set E. So let's say E is a member of this collection, this sigma algebra. That implies that its complement is also in A by condition 1. And that implies that the union of E and its complement is in A by condition 2 because we could even, oh, you know, this is infinite here, but we could always make it finite by taking, say, all of E1, I mean, all of E2, E3, all of those we'll take to be E complement, and we'll take E1 to be E itself. So we can always, this always implies this condition for finite unions. And this union is simply omega itself, because it's E and everything that wasn't in E, everything else in omega that wasn't in E. So therefore, omega is in A. Next, the empty set is also always in a sigma algebra. And this we can see just immediately from 1, because 1 implies that omega is in A, and by condition 1, the complement is also in A. And the complement of omega is simply the empty set. Third remark. This one's a little more interesting. The previous two are sort of simple. Give you an idea for what a sigma algebra looks like a little bit. But now, for any sigma algebra, say, we'll call it A, it's closed under countable intersections. Now you remember condition 2 said that it was closed under countable unions. This one's closed under countable intersections. So it looks just the same, except you replace this with an intersection. So how do we prove this? Well, let's look at the intersection. Let's take, so we'll take some sequence of sets, just like here. So suppose we have some sets, E1, E2, some sequence in A. Then the intersection, this is the thing we want to show, is in A. We can write this as the intersection, so any set is equal to the complement of its complement. So we can rewrite this in this way. And by De Morgan's laws, if you know your set theory laws, De Morgan's laws say the intersection of the complements equals the union, I'm sorry, equals the complement of the unions. The intersection of the complements equals the complement of the unions. And this is in A because each of these is in A, so their complements are in A. The union is in A by condition 2. And the complement of that is in A by condition 1. And therefore, this whole thing is in A. So that proves that A is closed under countable intersections.